Hello students, today I am going to share the introductory aspects of Apache Hive with you. This is the logo of Apache Hive. You are going to learn what is Hive, the story of Apache Hive from Facebook to Apache, what are the advantages of Apache Hive, what is the case study of NASA that how it adapted Apache Hive, in which situation it adapted the Apache Hive, what is the basic architecture of Apache Hive, what is Metastore configuration of the Apache Hive and what is Hive data model that you are learning in this lecture. The Hadoop ecosystem contains different sub-projects or the tools such as Scoop, Pig and Hive and they are used to help the Hadoop modules. The scoop is used to import and export the data to and fro between HDFS and RDBMS. PIG is a procedural language platform used to develop a script for MapReduce operations. And Hive is a platform used to develop the SQL type of scripts to do the MapReduce operations. Hive is a rigorously wide used tool for big data analytics and a great tool to start your big data career with. In this Hive lecture, I am going to discuss about the Apache Hive introduction and the different different topics that I have told you earlier. Apache Hive is a data warehousing tool in the Hadoop ecosystem. It provides SQL-like language for querying and analyzing the big data. The motivation behind the development of Hive is a frictionless learning path for SQL developers and the analyst. Hive is not only the savior for people from non-programming background, but it also reduces the work of the programmers who spend long of hours writing MapReduce programs. Hive is also told as the data warehouse infrastructure tool to process structured data in Hadoop. It resides on top of the Hadoop to summarize the big data and makes querying and analyzing easy. You might be aware of the data warehousing system or data warehousing infrastructure. What is the role of that? That is not, nothing but the Hive is going to use in the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, as the data warehouse tool. Initially, Hive was developed by Facebook. Later on, the Apache Software Foundation took it up and developed it further as an open source under the name of Apache Hive. It is used by different companies. For example, Amazon uses it in Amazon Elastic MapReduce. Hive is not a relational database, it is not a design for OLTP, it is not a language for real-time queries and row level updates. Before 2008, all the data processing infrastructure in Facebook was built around a data warehouse based on commercial RDBMS, but now they are used by the Apache Hive. These are the features of Hive. It stores schema in a database and process data into HDFS. It is designed for OLAP that is used for the analysis purpose. It provides SQL type language for querying called HiveQL or HQL. So here they are using HQL query language. It is familiar, it is fast, scalable and extensible. You can just learn the Hive tutorial or you can just learn the Hive. Now the question is where to use Apache Hive? Apache Hive takes advantage of both the words that is SQL database system as well as the Hadoop MapReduce framework. Therefore, it is used by a vast multitude of companies. It is mostly used for the data warehousing where you can perform analytics and data mining that does not require real-time processing. Some of the fields where you can use Apache Hive are the data warehousing as well as the ad hoc analysis. 
as it is said you cannot clap with one hand only that is you cannot solve every problem with a single tool therefore you can couple hive and other tools to use it in many other domains for example tableau along with apache hive can be used for the data visualization apache tees integration with the hive will provide you real time processing capabilities etc moving ahead in this apache hive lecture let us have a look at a case study of the facebook as well as nasa how how they have used the apache hive or how they have integrated apache hive in their system okay let's see how facebook has adapted uh, apache hive as i told you before 2008 all the data pre processing infrastructure in facebook was built around a data warehouse based on commercial rdbms this infrastructure which include the traditional rdbms were capable enough to sufficient the needs of facebook at that time but as the data shared growing very fast it become a huge challenge to manage and process this huge data set according to a facebook article the data scaled from a 15 terabyte data set in 2007 to a 2 petabytes data in 2009 also facebook products involve analysis of the data like audience insights facebook lexicon facebook advertisement etc so they needed a scalable and economical solution to cope up with this very problem and therefore they started using the hadoop framework you can see that in the figure that the facebook is having a uh, 950 greater than 950 million users they are having greater than 500 terabytes per day data is generated greater than 70000 queries per day and greater than 300 million photos per day which is not a cup of tea for the traditional rdbms and that's why they came up with the hadoop map reduce where they have used the apache hive so here as the data grows in the facebook the complexity of map reduce codes grew proportionally so training people with a non programming background to write map reduce programs become very difficult also for performing simple analysis one has to write a 100 lines of map reduce code since the sql was widely used by engineers and analysts including facebook therefore putting sql on the top of the hadoop seemed a logical way to make hadoop accessible to users with sql background and hence the ability of the sql to suffice for the most of the analytic requirements and the scalability of the hadoop gave birth to apache hive which has allowed to perform sql like queries on the data present on hdfs and later the hive project was open sourced in august 2008 by facebook and is freely available as apache hive today you can see these things in the figure that these are the challenges and as a solution how to map reduce because it is hard to program but users are knowing the sql as well so that's why the apache hive where the tables can be partitioned and the bucketed it is flexible for the schema and evolution it is easy to plug in custom mapper and reducer code here in apache hive jdbc and odbc drivers are also available and hive tables can be defined directly on hdfs which are extensible for the types formats functions and the scripts
let's see now the nasa model or the case study of the nasa where apache hive is adopted a climate model which is called as regional climate model evaluation system so there a climate model in nasa a cli climate model is a mathematical representation of the climate system based on various factors that impacts the climate of the earth basically it describes the interaction of various drivers of the climate like ocean sun atmosphere etc to provide an insight into the dynamics of the climate system the nasa has introduced the rcms it is used to project the climate conditions by simulating the climate changes based on the factors that affect the climate nasa's jet propulsion laboratory jpl has developed regional climate model evaluation system rcmes for analysis and evaluation of the climate output model against remote sensing data present in various external repositories it has two component first one is the regional climate model evaluation database and another is a regional climate model evaluation toolkit let's see first what is the purpose of the database and then later on we'll learn what is the purpose of the toolkit the regional climate model evaluation database is a scalable cloud database that loads the remote sensing data and reanalysis data which are related to the climate using extractors like apache oodt extractors apache tika etc finally it transforms the data as a data point model which is of the form either latitude longitude time value height and it stores it into the mysql database the client can retrieve the data present in rcmed by performing space queries or by performing the time queries next one is the rcmet that is regional climate model evaluation toolkit it provides the user an ability to compare the reference data present in the database with the climate model output data fetched from some other sources to perform different kinds of analysis and evaluation also you can refer this particular image to understand the architecture of the rcmes the reference data in rcmed comes from the satellite based remote sensing as it is shown in the figure that it takes the data from the remote sensing data repositories airs trmm etc according to the different parameters required for the climate model evaluation is taken as a input say for example airs it is atmospheric infrared sounder which provides the parameters like surface air temperature temperature and geopotential trmm is a tropical rain forest uh, rainfall measurement mission it provides the monthly precipitation etc it is being taken by the rcmed the space and the time queries are being performed on the rcmed by the rcmet you can see the things over here in the figure itself but the problem of this particular system evaluation system is that using the mysql database system is that after loading the mysql database with 6 billion tuples of the form latitude longitude time data point value height etc the system crashed as shown in the figure 
Even after dividing the whole table into the smaller subsets, the system generated huge overhead while processing the data. So, over here, NASA or the JPL team needs a scalable solution that can store and process this huge amount of the data with SQL-like querying capability. Finally, they decided to use Apache Hive to overcome these problems. Let's see that how Apache Hive can solve this problem. Now, let's see what are those features that convinced NASA's JPL team to include Apache Hive as an integral part in their solution strategy. These are the two points. Like since Apache Hive runs on top of Hadoop, it is scalable and can process data in distributed and the parallel fashion. Another point is it, uh, it provides the Hive query language which is similar to SQL and hence easier to learn for their programming team. Now let's see that how the NASA has deployed Hive in their RCMES system and what is the architecture of that. The figure explains the RCMES architecture with the Apache Hive integration. You can see that a Hadoop cluster is being added into a particular architecture because it shows that this particular figure shows that the deployment of the Apache Hive in RCMES, these are the steps taken by the NASA team while deploying Apache Hive is that first is they have installed Hive using Cloudera and Apache Hadoop as shown in the figure. Because Cloudera view that is web interface is being used, for, used as well as they have used the Apache scoop to ingest data into the Hive from the MySQL database. So from the MySQL database, if you want to store into the Apache Hive, you are using Apache scoop to ingesting your data. Third point is Apache OODT wrapper was implemented to perform queries on Hive and retrieve the data back to RCMET. So from the RCMED, the data is being stored to the Apache Hive and again the Apache OODT wrapper is being used in order to retrieve the data back to the RCMET. So here by using the Apache Hive, this is what the case study of the NASA, case study of the Facebook where they have used the Apache Hive. Now it must be very much clear that where e e actually or exactly Hive can be used or Hive can be ad adapted in the real-time problems or in the real-time applications. Let's see further what is the architecture of the Hive. See, this is the Hive architecture. The components which are used in the Hive architecture are the Hive client, Hive services, the processing framework, resource management, and distributed storage. Here, this architecture and the flow in which the query is being submitted to the Hive and how it is being processed using the MapReduce framework is being shown. First component is Hive Client. Hive Clients are being supported by the Hive application written in many languages. It's like Java, C++ or the Python. Using JDBC, Thrift and ODBC drivers, you can see that the uh, Hive clients can be the Thrift or the JDBC or the ODBC. Hence, one can always write a Hive client application written in the language of the choice. If you want to go into the detail or if you want to implement the Hive architecture in your system, then you must go through or you must go in the detail of each of the client that if you want to go for the thrift client, then go into the detail that how the thrift client can work and how it can be installed. Okay, but basically the Hive is supporting the three 
clients that is Swift client, JDBC driver and the ODBC driver. Next is the Hive services. Apache Hive provides various services like CLI, the web interface, etc. to perform the queries. You can explore each of them in any of the Hive tutorial or any of the blog. Right now, I took this particular material from the Edureka PPT and the videos. You can go through the um, uh, study material that I'm going to provide you uh, through your mail I'll send or you may go through any of the Edureka or the tutorials points reference material for the Apache Hive. Third one is the processing framework and resource management. Internally, Hive uses Hadoop MapReduce framework as de facto engine to execute the queries. Hadoop MapReduce framework is a separate topic in itself and that is actually known to everyone. So I am not discussing the Apache Hadoop MapReduce framework. The third one and the last one, sorry, fourth one and the last one is distributed storage. As Hive is installed on top of Hadoop, it uses the underlying HDFS for the distributed storage. See, data model, I have not discussed the data model over here in detail, but data in Hive can be categorized into three types on the granular level. It can be stored in the table or the partition or in the bucket. The tables in the hive are the same as the tables present in the relational database. You can also perform the filter, project, join and union operations on the hive tables. You can also work upon the partitions and the buckets. They are worked as a data model or the conceptual components of the Hive architecture. Meta store configuration is the metadata information using RDBMS and an open source that is object relational model called as ORM layer called data nucleus which converts the object representation into the relational schema and vice versa. The reason for choosing RDBMS instead of HDFS is to achieve the low latency. You can implement Metastore in the configuration of the embedded or the local Metastore or on the remote Metastore. Thank you. I have used the tutorials from the www.tutorialspoint.com and from the edureka.com. You can go through the study material of the edureka as well as tutorials point for the detailed 